Europeans are reacting to developments in India's Manipur. Yes, humanity's biggest criminals are acting as humanity's saviors and people are ready to listen. This is why we live in a twisted world. And of course, as expected, xenophobic politicians of the Western colonial criminal states seem to be ready to teach India how to protect minorities and preserve diversity. So the European Parliament held a discussion on developments in Manipur and adopted a resolution lecturing India on issues of human rights and freedom of religion. India criticized the move, saying that such interference in India's internal affairs is unacceptable and reflects a colonial mindset. So what on earth is actually happening? How can neo-Nazi sympathizers, neo-fascists or neo-colonizers have the audacity to preach human rights to others? Yes, viewers, don't forget, this is the same European Parliament that has been home to multiple leaders hailing from political parties that have been described as neo-fascist and Christian supremacist. But why should Indians even take the European Parliament seriously in the first place? After all, this is the same European Parliament where a neo-Nazi from Germany was assigned a seat in the Parliament's Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs Committee. Yes, you heard that right. As mentioned here, a Nazi acting as a guardian of human rights right from the European Parliament. I mean, shouldn't India's Parliament discuss how xenophobic politicians, Christian supremacists, neo-fascists and neo-Nazi sympathizers have been present in the European Parliament and have been openly participating in policy making? Point 2. So European colonial criminal states, listen carefully. Instead of adopting this agenda-driven and politically motivated resolution regarding India's Manipur, the European Parliament should have adopted an apology resolution to apologize to the people of India for the crimes that Europeans have committed in India, particularly in India's Manipur. If the US Congress can adopt an apology resolution to apologize to native Hawaiians, then why can't the European Parliament do something similar to apologize to the people of India? European colonial criminal states, how dare you forget your crimes against India? Manipur's Kanglashas, sacred to Meitei heritage, destroyed by Europeans, blown to pieces. Where is the apology resolution? The Christianization of cookies, nagas and various tribes of India by European Christian missionaries, destruction of India's native cultures and our global civilizational heritage. European Parliament, where is the apology resolution? The first International Congress on World Evangelization was held in Lausanne, Switzerland. Christians around the world gathered in Europe to participate in the radical task of the total evangelization of the world. European politicians, any apologies for that? But of course, it doesn't mean Europeans never apologize for their crimes or confess their so-called sins. In fact, they do it quite regularly. But they do it in church. Yes, in our so-called liberal and advanced Europe, even today, educated European girls and boys of Catholic background feel societal and religious pressure to seek forgiveness in the presence of priests for their sins. Yes, the sins that may also include the so-called sins of masturbation and premarital sex. And it is done in the presence of priests who could be pedophiles or sex criminals themselves. Roberta Metzola, President of the European Parliament, I want to show you your own country, Malta's constitution. Read this. This. And this. Why so much advantage to Christianity? Now answer me. Is this your model of inclusivity and secularism? How would you and the European Parliament react if India's constitution gave the same advantage to Hinduism? Roberta Metzola, in our Europe, when Christian priests rape nuns and minors, when doctors or medical staff face threats or anti-abortion violence, when exorcism is conducted by Christians to rid people of the demons of homosexuality, does it violate human rights or not? But of course, despite all this, European Catholic missionaries are working tirelessly to expand the same culture in other parts of the world. Roberta Metzola, will this Christian expansionism deteriorate the human rights situation or not? When evangelicals push Christianity on vulnerable tribal children or lure minors using toys in poor or developing countries as a tool for conversion, Roberta Metzola, does it violate human rights or not? Roberta Metzola, as shown here, the majority of child sexual abuse web pages were being hosted in Europe. Did it violate human rights or not? When our European girls auction their body online and Germany emerges as the brothel of Europe exploiting vulnerable or sex-trafficked women, does it violate human rights or not? 
when Roma people, Sami people, Kven people, Sinti people, Jews, people of African descent and other minorities are targeted, oppressed, persecuted or discriminated against in Europe, does it violate human rights or not? Point 4. When Hindus faced exodus in Meghalaya, when Chakmas faced institutional discrimination in Mizoram, when Bru people, many of whom are Hindus, faced persecution in Mizoram, when Hindus and indigenous communities faced violence by Christian militants in Tripura, did it violate human rights or not? For example, in Tripura, it was reported that NLFT tribal insurgents prohibited Hindu and Muslim festivals in areas that they control, cautioned women not to wear traditional Hindu tribal attire and prohibited indigenous forms of worship. Did the Christian supremacists in Europe also show their concern for that? Yes, violence or violent resistance against Christianized tribes in Meitei majority areas should be condemned. But how can one ignore Christians destroying Meitei places of worship in Kuki majority hills? The painful truth is that Christianization and colonialism by Europeans has contributed to clashes and conflicts in India's northeastern region. Yes, a lot of what was done by European colonial criminals in Africa was also done in India. Creating unnatural borders, exploiting or creating tribal conflicts to serve Europeans' colonial interests, using one tribal group against another to create a buffer zone. All this has caused irreversible damage to populations in many formerly colonized parts of the world. The European colonial criminals may have left, but India is still facing the effects of crimes committed by Europeans. But European Parliament, where is the official apology? Yes, shouldn't the European Parliament officially apologize for planting the seeds of divide and rule in Africa, India and elsewhere? As described here in Manipur, the colonial policy of divide and rule between the hills and valley was responsible for the rise of ethnic conflict in post-independent India. It should be mentioned that monotheistic religions that openly invalidate all other religions and actively seek to replace every other faith can never be naturally as inclusive or accommodating as India's Dharmic systems. And societies who follow or preserve monopolistic religious systems are likely to colonize, exploit and genocide. History has shown us that. And Christianizing a country's population can't really guarantee peace. Within Christianity, there are divisions. Violence between Protestants and Catholics has killed millions and within Christianity, various denominations seem to be seeking a global monopoly or global conquest. But despite all that, the European colonial criminal states seem to enjoy blaming their victims. Doesn't that sound strange? I mean, why do they do that? I mean, why do the European colonial criminal states tend to blame their victims? To understand that, please listen to me carefully. Tell me, what happens when criminals rape their victims, commit serious crimes and never get punished? Well, they tend to commit even more heinous crimes and even start to shame or blame their victims, right? Similarly, European colonial criminal states were also never properly punished for their crimes and now they also shame and blame their victims. Perhaps this is exactly what this resolution on Manipur is about. It is about victim shaming. And perhaps that is why Arindam Bakchi of India's Ministry of External Affairs used the words colonial mindset while reacting to this resolution. But India's time will come. Victims will not remain victims forever. They will rise. India will rise. See you again.